Hi, I'm Lee Lowry, the Group Vice President and Head of U.S. Brand Partnerships at Outfront Media. Outfront is one of the largest out-of-home companies in North America, and I'm happy to be here with Deepti Prakash today. She is the President International and Chief Product Officer at TBWA, the Disruption Company. Um, welcome. We're Thank so you. glad to have you. Um, I wanted to start off by asking you a question about your new position at TBWA. Um, so, Deep D was just appointed the CPO of TBWA. It's the first ever opportunity for them to create the CPO role. So I'd love to hear more about what that role, what exists within that role, and then also, you know, what product expansion looks like for you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, it's an interesting question. I think uh, it's a really new kind of title in the marketing industry. And the reason that we went to it is for a couple of, you know, a couple of things that we see, a couple of shifts in the market. So one is that we know that clients are really struggling with having deep specialization in all the different areas of marketing that they need, as well as getting deep integration across all the different spaces their brand has to come to life. Mm -hmm. And finding that balance is really hard because you either have companies that were really generalists who couldn't really activate a brand authentically in unique spaces, or you had deep specialists who can get very much into a specific area of expertise but not really tie it together to other aspects. Mm -hmm. And our strategy for that is actually to have different product specialisms that allow us to build that capability in each of the different areas of expertise but then everything is held together by disruption, yep. which is our methodology for creating brand platforms that can come to life consistently in different spaces. Mm -hmm. And so it's the reason why we you know, formed the CPO uh, role and took on a product strategy. It's also to indicate that what we stand for is deliverables. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of players in our market that are very good at presenting ideas or coming up with decks and structures and systems. They're not applying it and building something tangible and mm -hmm. that's what we do and so mm -hmm. we're very purposeful about calling it products um, rather than something else and in terms of product expansion we actually started with the spaces that we have invested in over the last several years to really build specialism so uh, you know a couple of areas are really around b2b expertise mm -hmm. so we have over you know, 50 to 100 um, B2B companies that we've worked with around the world to help them with a range of different challenges from growth strategy to branding to social media and sales enablement to events and production. Mm -hmm. So we work with a range of companies and that's our product called Plex. Um, we have uh, uh, Sold, which is a retail product. Again, you know, deep experience in retail across mm -hmm. different industries. Um, design, so Design by Disruption is our design product. Um, we have deep production capability, actually. So Make is our production product. Um, uh, scaling across, uh, you know, nimble production, high craft production, as well as uh, scaled content production mm -hmm. with translation and transcreation services, uh, which we provide to a range of different companies. So uh, those are, you know, our start. We also have innovation and sustainability and others in the pipeline that are coming up where we're continuing to build deep expertise and we're looking forward to launching those yeah. uh, in the coming years. Completely full service yeah. for the clients that you serve. Um, I think it's so interesting. We've been hearing so much about, I think in the past year at Cannes, it was all about the metaverse. Uh, this year in Cannes and really throughout all of 2023, we're, t we're talking about AI. So I think I would love to hear more about, you know, what TBWA is seeing when it comes to client needs around AI and how that's going to shift the business, uh, maybe in the present as well as what the future may look like for us. Yeah, um, it's very interesting to see all the buzzwords come and go and, you know, the feeling that, oh, that has passed and now this is the thing. <laughs> the funny thing about AI is that this is something that we've been talking about and using for over a decade now, <laughs> right. one form or another. Right. <laughs> and so it's really great to see it catching hold. Uh, you know, we have this philosophy called always in beta. And so we're really excited about the uh, scaling of some of these uh platforms and themes uh, mm -hmm. in the market. We think that they can have tremendous impact. Right now, we see a huge potential for AI to really help us create a strong foundation uh, more quickly. Mm -hmm. So clients have a lot of uh, pressures on them. 
you know, they need to get things out fast. They've got to be more efficient with their dollars. And we see AI as being able to crunch a lot of information, provide a foundation on which we can start working on real creative ideas more quickly. Mm. It also gives us the opportunity over the long term to provide different levels of service to clients. We don't believe that everything requires, you know, kind of the Ferrari of services. Right. And so we see the potential for AI to be able to provide certain services that can be more automated and sold in a SaaS sort of way mm -hmm. to clients, mm -hmm. uh, in addition to some of the higher value services for the places where it makes sense to be able to deliver uh, the creative excellence that we need. Mm -hmm. And uniquely, I think the ability for things like ChatGPT, especially uh, with Omnicom, we have a unique partnership with Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, which allows us to have a sandboxed version of ChatGPT. So oh, it wow. allows us to actually provide an AI-based solution that's built on the history of all of the work that we've done as a disruption company. Mm -hmm. So the work that we will provide to clients that's enabled by our AI is mm -hmm. different than what you would get from the normal yeah. uh, you know, industry out there. And so we're excited about the potential of where that can take us. Yeah, that's incredible, incredible. Um, I think being in Cannes, we have to ask the question around creativity. This is the festival of creativity. So I think, you know, TBWA being as big as it is, I'd say, what are you most proud of that TBWA has been a part of uh, creatively over this past year? Yeah, you know, I think overall we feel like creativity has the power to solve a tremendous uh, breadth of business problems. And so we look at these things not only in terms of uh, what it can do uh, from an advertising and marketing perspective, but what can it do for society and culture at large. And there are two things actually that I'm deeply proud of. I mean, obviously there's a lot of work uh, that we've been doing from a, a DE&I perspective, and we talk about being DE&I by design mm -hmm. at TBWA. Uh, and one of those uh, uh, products that we've uh, come out with uh, is for the Columbia Journalism Review. Mm. And it was really about helping to shed a light on the media biases and how media coverage is not equal. Mm -hmm. And we could have done that in a really conventional way, which is, you know, highlight certain stories or take out print ads or whatever else. And this was for our client, the Columbia Journalism Review mm -hmm. uh, in New York. And instead, the team actually uh, used uh, data to identify how media coverage actually shows up for people of different backgrounds different genders, different races, different ages, to highlight you know, the importance of media coverage that is unbiased. Mm. And built a campaign called Are You Pressworthy on the back of this data-driven platform. Mm -hmm. It was you know, hugely important in shedding light on you know, a, a really important issue, but making it very personal for people. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really proud of that work. The other one that I uh, think is really uh, unique and interesting is the work that we've done with social media. And really tying together, a lot of times uh, clients appear in social, but it's hard to translate the brand into that space, mm -hmm. often because they're working with specialists. Right. And for uh, our clients, Hilton, we launched the For This Day brand platform. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, really translated that into TikTok by creating a 10 minute ad on TikTok. Oh, wow. So it was the first time that anybody had used the platform that way, uh, but really kind of understanding authentically what that platform is about, challenging the notion of that, mm -hmm. and connecting it to what the brand stood for, mm -hmm. to me sort of brought together all of the things that we like to talk about mm -hmm. as what we like to do or what we want to do for our clients, yeah. and actually doing it and showing it shows the impact uh, that we were able to have. I mean, it had, you know, over 30 million views within several You, you disrupted know, weeks of being TikTok. Exactly. In the the way that it's typically a, a, a format for us all, so that's amazing. Exactly. Yeah. So we're very excited about that. <laughs> I love it. Wonderful. Well, it's been great to speak with you, and we're so thankful to have you here in Canada. We're going to go enjoy the rest of the day and all the panels we're on. Sweat it out, yes. but uh, <laughs> uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank yeah. you for your time. Thank you.